Okay, so here's actually where we're supposed to be using this theorem, this formula, which I just, and what I just mean to say is that this is where we're actually going to use the delta x as well. Okay, where it is also going to come into action as well as the rest. Okay, so let's quickly read it. A three kilogram trolley is at rest on a horizontal surface. This is my, uh, so they tell me that's three kilograms, three kg. Okay, on a frictionless surface, so there's no friction involved here. A constant horizontal force is applied um, of 10 newtons, so someone is pushing this thing at 10 newtons, on the trolley over a distance of 0.25 meters. So if it's being pushed up to that point. When the force is removed at point P, so now they stop pushing it, the trolley moves a distance of 10 meters up this incline until it reaches a maximum height of Q. So it's, it's, it's still got momentum, but then it's going up a hill, okay, up to that point. Okay, while the trolley moves up the incline, there's a constant frictional force of two Newtons acting on it. Write down the name of a non-conservative force acting on the trolley as it moves up an incline. A non-conservative force is a force, force that does not conserve mechanical energy okay and there's a theorem that says mechanical energy is conserved in a closed system a well, closed system just means there's no external forces including friction okay so um, mechanical energy so while it moves up the uh, up does it while it's moving up here does it have a f okay now let me rather say Non-conservative forces can therefore either be an applied force, because an applied force adds energy, or it can be friction. Okay, so while it's moving up here, which one of those two would it be? It's friction, there's no applied force on that side. Draw free, free label body diagram showing all the forces acting on the trolley as it moves along the horizontal surface. Excellent. I was going to do that anyway. Free body means I'm drawing the sketch. Okay. So there's my trolley on its surface. What do I start with? Weight. Weight, which is down. And then what do I draw in next? No, the direction of displacement. We need the direction of displacement so that we can. Now we know it's displacing in that direction. So um, again, I'm just dry, uh, I'm putting it in in a, a light color in a pencil or something. Okay. Then I'm going to do my normal force, and I just do this so that I can do my normal force. My normal force is perpendicular to that, making a 90 degree. Okay. So that's my normal force. What else do I have acting on this one? Do I have friction? No. no, they said frictionless surface. Okay, so I don't have one in the opposite direction, but I do have an applied force. Is the applied force in this direction or in that direction? Okay. Left or right? right? Right, okay. So my applied force is in that direction. I saw some students get confused. If I'm pushing from the back, it means I'm pushing to the back. <laughs> okay, that's not how it works. So this is my force applied. Uh, Excellent. So if, you if you didn't add the direction of displacement, the free body is not complete. No, it's, it is complete. I just, I'm giving you this direction of displacement as part of how you should, what you should do in order to use this formula because direction of displacement is delta x and what direction is delta x where does it start where does it end so that i can get the angle that each formula makes with it so yes you'll uh, for this these three marks you get for weight for those three forces okay um state the work energy theorem in words that's just that the change in kinetic energy is equal to the net work done or the network done is equal to the change in kinetic energy. Use the work energy theorem to calculate the speed at which the um, uh, trolley reaches point P. Okay, this is, it is this formula. It is work of the applied force plus work of gravity equal, uh, plus work of friction equals the network done. Okay, but actually the work energy theorem states that 
what I'm going to use for the network done is the change in kinetic energy is now the work of the applied force yes there is a, a force applied the work of gravity while well, gravity is perpendic uh, perpendicular to the direction of displacement you see so there's no gravity is not doing any work friction is zero so this is what I have the change in delta x is equal to that so for four marks <laughs> and this is ridiculously easier half times the mass which we s uh, well let me write out the formula S uh, future velocity squared minus initial velocity squared okay and just see here is at rest what does that mean uh, it's not moving Excellent. Initial, velocity is zero. initial velocity is zero well done okay and cause what's the angle between the applied force and the direction of displacement zero, zero. Excellent. So what we're going to do is simply substitute everything we have. Three kilogram future velocities th is what we're trying to calculate. Initial velocity they said was at rest. The force applied we know is 10 newtons. Displacement is 2.5. Cause of zero is just one. And then literally future velocity squared is equal to 10 divided times 2 times 2.5. That's 50 over 3. The square root of that gives me what? Four point zero eight meters per second and then either say it's going east or to the left but please sorry to the right um, but please remember your direction okay when just when you get your final answer your uh, unit and your direction okay now they say calculate the height of the trolley that the trolley reached so we have to calculate this height and okay, I'm going to show you the difficult way and I'll show you how to quickly get it but um, the, um, it's not the difficult way just the longer route and then the shorter route okay what I want to show you here is that we have and it's five marks Okay, so the longer route is not a bad route. <laughs> okay, but you'll see here that it is the if if I knew what this angle was right here, I'd be golden, because I have the hypotenuse distance, and I'm trying to get the opposite side. So what I will use sine. So I'll say h is equal to um, delta delta x, which is the chain the displacement times sine of theta. Okay, so I have the delta x is 10, the displacement, okay, and if I knew that angle theta, I would be able to calculate h just using this, okay, so that's what I'm going to do, is I'm going to calculate this theta, so again, look at this, it's the same formula you won't believe, okay, because now I'm not on the frictionless surface anymore, I'm going up the incline, so here, I am up the incline, so I'm going to draw my force diagram. Okay, my force diagram, I put in my weight. After weight, what do I put in? Of Excellent, I'm going up the incline, so there's my dot. Okay, I do dot so that I can draw, do my normal force. Let's ignore normal force, it's just wasting our time. We in add friction in the opposite direction. Okay, we know that this angle here is the one we're looking for we don't know what that is okay so um, uh, what other forces do we have acting on it uh, no, only those two forces yeah. okay there's there's no more um, applied force at this point so it's only those two forces okay which means um, that I can now go and f add, add in my angles so I know that this is 180 degrees okay Theta is is this angle that that I'm making with the this angle here, okay? Would you agree with me that angle there is theta? So what is this angle? Theta is that angle there because these two lines are parallel. You see F. See why? I'm what is this whole angle? That one is. Oh, 
can I can draw it different again. So if I have my my object here, okay, there's weight going down. I'm literally asking for this angle here. No. Theta is there. You are saying that's theta. Then it would be 180 minus theta. Yeah, because this is not theta. Oh, yeah. Again, what is it? Look at the triangle. This oh, is the 90 plus. 90 plus theta. When an object is going up an incline, if theta is the angle that the incline makes with horizontal, the d this will always be 90 plus that theta. If it's going down the incline, okay, then this is the direction. Then we'll be using that angle, which is 90 minus theta. Okay, so if it's going down the angle, it's 90 degrees minus theta. Up the incline, it's 90 degrees plus theta. Okay, down and remember, I'm using cos each time. Okay, so cos upwards becomes negative sine of theta. And there you see the negative comes in because up the incline it's stealing energy. Down the incline, cos of 90 minus just becomes sine. Sine of theta. That's positive. Which means down the incline, gravity is adding to my energy because it's helping me push that down the, the slope. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. Up the incline it's working against me. Okay, so this is 90 plus theta. So if I... 90 plus theta. So if I now write down my formula, we have our, our network done is equal to um, work done by the applied force plus work done by gravity plus work done by friction. Awesome thing is there's no applied force. Okay, so we only have gravity and friction um, in this case. So we don't need that one. For gravity, we said it's mass times gravity times delta x okay times cos and the angle now is 90 degrees minus uh, plus theta you with me that's the angle between the displacement and weight plus the work done by friction as we said it's always cos of 180 and we just have the frictional force times delta x yeah, yeah, it is. I, I've not filled in values except for the angle so far. Okay, um, the network done, I've got um, three options. I've got net force times delta x, change in kinetic energy, which is a half mass times velocity squared minus velocity squared, initial and final, or this one can also be mass times acceleration times delta x. Which one would you recommend we use? How does Fnet help with that? The thing is, look at this. Do we know the mass? Yeah. Do we have acceleration? Uh, no. Do we have? Okay, we have delta x. Okay. Do we have net force? No. In this one, do we have the mass? Yes. Do we have the future velocity? No. The velocity at point Q? Yes, we do. They say the trolley moves a distance of 10 meters up the uh, incline until it reaches its maximum height. Okay, maximum height means velocity is? So we have future velocity. Initial velocity is the velocity at P. Do we have velocity at P? Yes, that's the velocity we calculated in our previous question. Okay, so it makes sense to use that formula. To use a half mass times future velocity squared minus initial velocity squared. Okay, that's what I'll use. Okay, so a half mass, we said is 0 0,5, was it? No, 3 kilograms, sorry. Okay, it's a 3 kilogram object. Future velocity is 0 squared minus initial velocity is 4.08 squared. Be very careful, I see some students square the negative as well. That will give you a wrong answer. One of the students that did it yesterday squared that giving a wrong answer so um, 
three kilograms times nine point eight times ten times and this one I'm going to simplify to sine of theta and then that just makes this a negative remember because cos 90 plus is negative sine of theta the reason why I'm doing it is because I'm trying to find theta okay, so I want to have this equation as easy as possible okay plus friction was given as 2 newtons Delta X is the 10 displacement. Cos of 180 just makes this a negative as well. Okay, so now since I'm trying to solve for theta, I must get sine of theta on its own. Sine of theta is equal to, let's quickly do that. What did you get? Uh, 0, 0.02. 0 0.02. Go on, remember? Uh, 6, 9. 6, 9. And then it goes on the way. Zero go 0, 3, 4, 1, 3, 9. The reason why I write it all down is because um, when I'm when I'm working with this ratio, a small it rounding off to 0 0.2 is going to make a massive difference in my answer. So what would you get theta? And now, of course, we use sine, the inverse sine of this expression. And what do we get theta to be? What's it? It's Yeah. So 0 0.96. Go on. 8538936838 I'm still not rounding and please do remember when you do these questions only round your answer okay so they say that's a very small angle okay maybe it is a very small angle okay um, let's now just go and see we said if we can find the angle if we can find theta we have delta x which is the hypotenuse of this triangle and so we can just do that okay so what is h is now delta x times sine of theta which gives me Maybe or maybe not. It's it's okay. It's zero point zero point one seven meters. Okay. Finish your question. Go on with your question paper, and if you have time, you come back. Okay, because in fact this is the correct answer. So you would have now spent another five minutes trying to find your error, and you had the correct answer. Okay. So even if it doesn't look correct. There's sometimes it's obviously wrong, like you know it must be positive and that you get a negative answer, something like that. But rather, write down your answer, go on with your paper, don't waste more, more time. This is in fact the right answer. Let me just show you the shorter method, and I want to show you the shorter method by showing you this. H is the height. If I have an object moving on an incline, this height here is equal to the displacement times delta x the displacement times sine of theta that angle okay which means look at this in my formula that i used this here is this here is delta x sine theta but with a negative so in this formula, and we did, we did look at this earlier, I could, if I have my network done, and I have that my network is work done by the applied force plus work done by gravity, the work done and work done by the frictional force, the work done by gravity is negative the change in potential energy. In other words, in other words, this is the work done by gravity plus
plus, no, uh, sorry, the work done by, um, oh, well, let me just look at the work done by gravity. Remember we said that the work done by gravity is mass times gravity times displacement times cos of the angle, and the angle when I'm going up an incline is 90 plus, uh, 90 minus, uh, sorry, plus theta, but this 90 plus theta becomes negative mg, sorry, that's delta x, mg delta x sine of theta. And this mg delta x sine of theta, that is the height. So this is negative mgh, and mgh is the change in potential energy, where h is, is what is actually the change in height. Or just, um, so this is mgh. So what you could have done right in the beginning, instead of working with trig, you could have had your formula that the net work done is equal to work applied plus work done by gravity plus work done by friction and then just say well this is change in kinetic energy this is uh, applied forces if a delta x cos uh, usually cos zero plus and in this case there wasn't even a force applied okay but this one could have just become negative m G H plus work done by friction is also negative friction times delta X okay so that's one thing that will maybe make it easier but if if you this is important if I'm going up an incline it would be negative mgh because my potential energy is stealing. I'm, I'm adding potential energy. So it's stealing from my kinetic energy. That's why it has to be negative. If I'm going down an incline, it would be positive mgh. Why? Well then, down the incline, this would have been mg delta x cos, and I told you earlier that's 90 degrees minus theta. And this is just mg delta x sine of theta. And x sine of it is just mg h. So down an incline, okay, the work done by gravity must be positive. Up an incline, it must be negative. Okay, makes sense. Cool. And that's it. Is there another question here we have to answer? No. Okay, calculate the height, and if you go and calculate it with this method, you'll get to exactly the same answer. Okay, cool.